In my last video, I illustrated where demand curves come from when you're thinking about an indifference curve in budget constraint diagram. Specifically, as this diagram shows, if we want to get a demand curve for the good X, what we do is we trace out the consumer optima as we change the price of it. Actually ask ourselves, uh, given the price that gave us this budget line, what is the quantity demanded? That's just the X in the optimal bundle. And we can do the same thing for the new price. That's just the X in the optimal, the new optimal bundle. Think about a price change. There are actually two effects. One effect is that, well, that good that the, for which the price went up, well, that's more expensive. Uh, that uh, is formally known as the substitution effect. If Px over Py increases, the opportunity cost of consuming good x increases along with that. And so we would expect that consumers would substitute away from that good that has become relatively more expensive. Or suppose your landlord doubled your rent. You'd really say, wow, I really feel poorer. And now that really embodies this second effect of a price change. The price goes up, it feels like that price going up has just taken money right out of your pocket. And so really that is the second effect of a price increase, or just the price change more generally, that is the income effect. So we have an income effect and a substitution effect. And they're both acting when we go from bundle A to bundle B with this increase in the price. So I want to walk you through decomposing this price change into these two effects. The price change made this individual worse off. And we need to ask ourselves, how much money would we have to compensate this individual to make him just as well off as before. Well, it turns out that if we compensate this individual enough to buy his old optimal bundle, well, that's going to be just too much money to make him just as well off. Because if we brought this budget line out, it would actually cut through the old budget line, and he would be able to achieve a higher level of utility. So we're not going to give this individual as much money as, as he or she would need to get back to bundle A. In fact, we could give just a little bit less. And one way to visualize this is to ask, how can we shift this out parallel and be just tangent to our old indifference curve? It's going to occur this spot right about there. I'm going to draw this new budget line sort of an imaginary budget line, and we could ask ourselves, boy, we really feel bad for this individual that the price had gone up and he feels poorer. We really feel bad about that. Um, so we're going to think about how much money we would have to give this individual to make him just as well off. So if we give this individual that much additional income, we would consume bundle C. Now it turns out that we've actually just decomposed it into these two effects. One effect it's going to be our substitution effect, is to go from bundle C, or bundle A, to bundle C. That's going to be our substitution effect. Notice that the whole change in this person's consumption is moving from bundle A to bundle C. It just is due to the change in the relative prices. Remember, the tangency is where the marginal rate of substitution equals the, the ratio of the prices. This change from bundle A, therefore, to bundle C, is only due to the change in the relative price. Now, these two budget lines are parallel, so there's no change in relative prices. The only change between this black line with bundle B on it and this red line with bundle C on it only changes income. And so, we can go ahead and label this as our income effect. And so there we have it. We have a decomposition of the substitution effect and the income effect. 
the two combined lead to the total effect, the total price effect. And you can see that there really are two components to a price change, or the effects of a price change. One, it's more expensive, and always when we think about uh, it being more expensive, we're going to substitute along the indifference curve toward the good that has become relatively, uh, relatively cheaper and away from the good that's become relatively more expensive. With an income effect, however, we could get an increase or a decrease in, uh, in the quantity of the good that we're interested in. It would be a decrease, notice that we're taking income away when we get a higher price change, feel poorer. It would be a decrease when it is a normal good, and it would be an increase if it was an inferior good. So that is, uh, that will tell you precisely how to decompose a price change into income and substitution effects.